Hey guys, it's Tanika and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to have a little chat about the best and the worst makeup releases of 2020. I love hearing people's thoughts and opinions on makeup, so I thought we could have a little chat about it today. I've got a list here of some of my favorite releases and some of my not so favorite releases, so let's just get into it. Are we ready for this? Should we start with some of the bad ones? <laughs> That's always fun. I'm not trying to be mean in this video either, I'm just I just want to talk, okay? These are just my opinions. If you like these releases that I don't, like, that's fine. If you hate the releases that I like, whatever. All right, I'm going to start with a collection that actually really disappointed me. And it hurts me to say this, but I just need to put it out there. I am the biggest Friends fan. I love Friends. I watch it all the damn time over and over and over again. It's a comfort show for me. I just, I freaking love it. Look, I've got my friend's mug here that I had my coffee in this morning. And so when Makeup Revolution announced they were doing a friend's collab, I was so excited. But when it got released, I was pretty let down. It just, I don't feel like it fit the vibe of friends. Like some of the palettes, are extremely colorful. What's that about? I was envisioning like, you know, that real 90s vibe, lots of browns and taupes and, you know, that path, not bright pinks. I know Makeup Revolution is an affordable brand as well, so obviously they're not going to go like all out with the packaging, but I felt as though some of the packaging was pretty pathetic. The little eyeshadow palettes they did, so they've got the Monica, the Rachel, and the Phoebe, they've just taken a picture, like a Polaroid and put on there. I don't know, I just don't like it. And there's pinks in pretty much all of the palettes. I don't know, I'm just not feeling it. And then they released that really big palette, which like the packaging is cool on that one, it's like the movie. Thing. I don't know what that's called. And they also have the palette that's in the shape of the little frame on the back of Monica's door. Both of these palettes are filled with pops of pink and purple. Like, okay, maybe I get the purple, having a pop of purple, because that's Monica's apartment, but I don't know. It's just not the vibe I was hoping for. The one palette I do like and that I think fits it is the, the Grab a Cup of Coffee face palette, light to medium. This is full of browns and that screams 90s friends vibes to me. The packaging of this one is cute as well. It's in the shape of a mug and it's got central perk on it. But mm, the rest of the collection I was pretty disappointed in. Even the lipsticks, like they're just not the kinds of shades I would have chosen. Where's the browns? I want brown. I think the only lipstick that actually looks quite nice is this Rachel one here. It's more of like a mauve. As I said, I am the biggest Friends fan and anything with Friends merchandise, I want it all. But this, the only thing I actually wanted from the collection was that handheld mirror. Like that's the most exciting thing to me in this collection. <sighs> I'm just putting it out there. Putting it out there, okay? I was very disappointed. <laughs> Onto a collection that I loved this year was Fenty releasing her cream bronzers and blushes. Oh, how nice were they? So I did end up picking up one of the cream bronzers in Butter Biscuit and the blush in Strawberry Drip. The bronzer is amazing. As soon as I saw that she was releasing these, I was like, need it. I need it. And I don't feel that way about a lot of makeup, but this just spoke to me. The packaging is beautiful. Of course, she is so inclusive. So there are so many shades within the bronzer and the blush range. It just, the formula of these products as well is beautiful. They blend flawlessly. I just thought that was a really great collection and it was a winner in my eyes. On to another fail, and I'm pretty sure this whole brand has kind of been, I hate to use the term cancelled, but we all know. And that's Jeffree Star. Now, uh, <laughs> okay, like I'm not a fan of him anyway, 
but talking about his makeup specifically, what the hell was that grey palette? <laughs> okay, so it's called the Cremated Eyeshadow Palette and it's just grey. Like, I don't know, he, his cosmetics don't appeal to me anyway, but when I saw this, I was like, it's such a big palette full of really unusable shades, in my opinion. I don't know, I thought that one was pretty weird. I also was quite grossed out, really, by his um, nude eyeshadow palette called the Orgy eyeshadow palette. Like, Orgy? Really? I don't know, I just think makeup doesn't need to be sexualized like that. I feel like Jeffree Star had a really good opportunity here to make the perfect nude eyeshadow palette and even though I'm not a fan of his, like everyone loves a nude eyeshadow palette and it's something I may have gone like, oh that's nice, probably wouldn't buy it but I could appreciate it. This, it's just so big as well like and it's got so many shades that I feel like are not needed, like the whole top row. But what? Uh, huh? <laughs> so yeah, that just, both those palettes, very unappealing to me. I'm pretty sure that Huda Beauty also released maybe some lipsticks this year and it was a very sexualized campaign. I just, like I'm not a prude, but there's a time and a place and it just weirds me out. <laughs> Speaking of Huda Beauty, her newest eyeshadow palette, the Naughty Nude, I just, like, it's an alright palette, it's got some nice shades in it, but I feel as though her stuff is starting to get a little bit redundant, like, you can see the shades that she loves and she just releases them in 30 different ways, like, you know, give me something new and exciting. And then, well, I think she tried to do that with this palette by putting in that weird bubble ball creamy thing like that just looks gross and to be in there with powders like what if your powders like the kickback goes into that creamy like it just I don't know to me it looks like something that should be in a petri dish if you own this eyeshadow palette let me know what the texture of that is like because it looks it looks like mold as well because there's a little bit of blue in it I really liked her mercury retrograde retrograde eyeshadow palette. I feel as though that was something very new and different for her, which was nice to see. So, although I do enjoy most of the shades in that Naughty palette, I just feel like it's kind of been there, done that, boring. <laughs> Onto some eyeshadow palettes that I was really impressed with. I'm loving the fact that we are seeing some more cool tones come into the market. So as you know, if you watch my channel, I really wanted the Natasha Denona Glam palette, but I wasn't sure how much use I would get out of it. So I end up picking up the ColourPop Tote palette. I just love to see something different being released and not just another warm tone eyeshadow palette. Like we all love them, but it's nice to see some cool tones getting into the mix. I'm actually really impressed with ColourPop this year. As we know, they release so much, like a bit too much. But their eyeshadow palettes have been very nice. The Wild Nothing palette is really beautiful. They also released those bigger ones. I'm pretty sure it's like the Stone Cold Fox or something, which again has a lot more cool tones in it. And then they have a matching like nude palette to that as well, I'm pretty sure. Their recent collab with Raw Beauty Christie was beautiful. They actually just did a second release on that and I'm pretty tempted to buy some of it. I just think that ColourPop has really stepped up their game, although they could probably like wall up on the releases, at least they're releasing nice things, you know? And it's not just the same thing over and over again. I am seeing a difference between all these releases, which is really nice. Another affordable brand that I think has really stepped up their game this year is e.l.f. Like, they have been releasing some really nice products. Their hydrating concealer, that is friggin' amazing. They've also released those mini eyeshadow quads in beautiful color stories and they're so affordable. There are a few more products that I've seen them release that 
haven't come to Australia yet, but I'm looking forward to them coming. And that is the blush and highlighter duo palettes. And also I'm pretty sure they have like a, a balm or like a cream blush coming as well. Like it just looks so nice. And I think they've really stepped up their game. They're staying on trend with their releases. And it's just great to see more affordable makeup stay on trend and release new and exciting things. To some brands that I think are being pretty boring and I'm not enjoying any of their releases are Too Faced and Urban Decay. I got over Too Faced a long time ago, but still I see their releases pop up on like Trend Mood or Beauty News and like, they're just boring and it's the same shit over and over again. Like, even with Urban Decay, like, They've released a few eyeshadow palettes recently and they're just, you know, it's like, eh, <laughs> for me anyway. A celebrity brand I was very excited about this year was Selena Gomez's Rare Beauty. I am really annoyed that we can't get it here in Australia, but I loved the look of the entire brand and I love that she come out with so many products and they just looked really great. Like a foundation, the concealer, the liquid blushes and the liquid highlighters. I feel like that's very on trend with what people are into lately as opposed to powder products. So I think she did a really great job and I really hope we can get our hands on it here soon because I definitely want to try it. I feel like so many celebrities are coming out with makeup brands and I haven't really been interested in a lot of them. I'm not the biggest Selena Gomez fan, like I like her music, but I'm not like a stan, but I thought that this brand was just so well marketed and the products looked really great. Now this next product I think would have to be the dumbest release of the year. And that was the Becca Zero Foundation. <laughs> what? And why are you marketing it as a foundation? It's a primer. Is it even a like, what? <laughs> That was just dumb. That was really dumb. Like it got people talking about it and I feel like people probably haven't talked about Becca for a while. So I guess it got people, you know, talking about the brand, but not for the best reasons. And then lastly, I want to talk about <laughs> Real Techniques. I love Real Techniques. I think they release really great brushes. They're affordable, but did you see that sponge that they released? Like, it was silicon and spongy. Okay, it's called the Miracle Mixing Sponge. Now, I, I don't even want to say this, but I'm going to. As soon as I look at this, it makes me think of a dog's red rocket. And I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that when I'm looking at makeup products. I don't want to think about that ever. But this sponge makes me think of that. And it's very disturbing. <laughs> like, I know there was a phase of the silicon sponge. We all tried it out and it wasn't very good. So I think this product was kind of unnecessary and it just looks wrong. It looks wrong. I don't like looking at it. And like it's pink as well, like make it orange or something. <laughs> all right, well that is all for today's video. Let me know down below in the comments what you think the best and the worst makeup releases of the year were. Overall, I'm actually really impressed just with the drugstore in general. I feel as though drugstore brands have been really making an effort to release on-trend products and have more consistent releases as well, which I have been loving. I feel as though this year, I have tried some really, really fantastic products from the drugstore and having them available to us Aussies as well is just a bonus. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed watching today. If you're new, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. I'm really hoping to get to 7,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I don't know if I'll make it, but it would be nice. I hope you are all having a fabulous day wherever you are and I will see you in the next one. Bye.